welcome, or oh, welcome back to A Game of Fans and Thrones. My name's Hannah, and this is my best books of 2023 so far. It's incredible how quick this year has gone. I mean, when I'm filming this, it's like the 9th or the 10th of June. So we are pretty much halfway through the year. So I have the three physical books that I have rated a five star and we do also have a Kindle book. So so far in the month in the month in the year I have read forty two um novels, books, manga well not so much manga, I don't do manga, but comic books um i think primarily they would be fantasy i am primarily a fantasy reader which i think is very much um reflected in the little list that i'm going to show you um there's one book that i did rate five star originally but upon thinking about it it's probably only a four so that gets an honorable mention i don't have it with me because i have unhold it it's probably for sale on vinted and that is the road trip by beth o'leary i thought that was such a funny read such a heartwarming read i dealt with so many topics it's just i'm not going to reread it so it had to go so i think that may stay as a five but it wasn't an absolute favorite it's probably a low five low five if not very high four uh the uh, next, the Kindle book is Fortuna Swan by K.J. Sutton. I read that back in January and while I can't remember names, I remember that Fortuna is a nightmare and she can travel through people's dreams manifesting what scares them. And that was very well written and it was such a quick read for what it was and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, then we have these three. I think I may have given you a sneak peek at the at the um, titles, and I'm doing it again. Uh, but they are in no particular order. The Last Bear by Hannah Gold. This is probably my best book of the year. It just made me cry. It was such a touching story about standing up for what you believe in, climate change, animal rights. Uh, there probably is trigger warnings in here, I think, death of a parent. Uh, but I will read the little synopsis uh, because I can't do this justice. There are no polar bears on left on Bay Island, at least that's what April's father tells her, when his research takes them to an Arctic outpost for six months. But one night, April catches a glimpse of something distinctly bear-shaped loping across the horizon, a polar bear who shouldn't be there, uh, be here, who is hungry, lonely and a long way from home. A bear who is missing something, just like April. As their unlikely bond grows, April is determined to save her new friend and so begins the biggest, most important journey of her life. A journey to save Bear and maybe April herself. And what clinched this for me personally was the ending. It was very, there was a sense of foreboding throughout the book that yes, um, I may give spoilers or at least very vague spoilers. Uh, there is the sense of foreboding that it's going too well for these two. You know that something is going to happen. You just don't know what. And then when it does hit you, you think, yeah, this is what it was building to. This is why everything's been going so well. And it was just such a sweet read about a girl falling in love with a bear. Not, I plan a barbarian falling in love, but friendship love, um, finding a new friend, finding out how he got there, why he's there, why he's still there, and figuring out if there is a way to help him and others 
in a similar situation uh, because Bear Island used to be a stepping stone for bears on the way to... Is that Arctic, the top of the bottom? But either way. Um, it, Bear Island is a real place and it did used to be a stepping stone for bears. But now with climate change, obviously, more bears aren't making it home. They're not making it as far as they need to. The ice shelves are melting, the currents are changing. And this just puts it into perspective. I'm not surprised it was the Waterstones children's book winner. And I think it was the book, the book of the month as well. And this was published. Do, 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 back in 2021 uh, but this edition I think was 2022 uh, because it's a cover the cover design wasn't copyrighted until 22 but the text is 2021 so it's a it is unforgettable you're right Michael Morpurgo <laughs> but yes that is probably my favourite book of the year and Regardless if you are an adult, a child, a teenager, an elderly person, read it. It puts things into perspective. Then I changed my rating system going, from going purely on um, enjoyment because I was getting a lot of fours, but not many fives. So I changed back to Corpile, from, which is G from Book Rusts. The rating, excuse me, a rating system. Basically, you give every aspect of the Corpel name a rating between 1 and 10. So that's for character, atmosphere, writing, plot, intrigue, logic, and enjoyment. And then you get an average. So, the last two books on this list are The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. Again, I will read the back. Neither here nor there, but long ago, Luli Al-Nazari is the Midnight Merchant, a criminal who, with the help of her jinn bodyguard, hunts and sells illegal magic. When she saves the life of a cowardly prince, she draws the attention of his powerful father, the Sultan, who blackmails her into finding an ancient lamp. With no choice but to obey or be executed, Luli journeys with the Sultan's oldest son to find the artefact. In a world where story is reality and illusion is truth, Luli will discover that everything, her enemy, her magic, even her own past, is not what it seems. And yes, this was such a ride. Um, let's see if I can grab... Oh no, it wasn't until I read, started reading this one that I used to call Belle, But this got five stars. And it's an Aladdin and the Lamp retelling, which gives our female characters more agency. Luli is the last survivor of her tribe and the jinn in this world are ruthless. But somehow her jinn friend, who, whose name I cannot find, Kedar, um, he found her in the desert and for reasons that we find out later on in the book, decided to stick with her their relationship is multifaceted uh, there's no romance but they do still love and care for each other in maybe a um, friend maybe even a brother sister or maybe more even a father daughter relationship because i think kadir is a lot older than luli he certainly needs he certainly knows a lot more than her and what follows is is after Luli goes to the midnight market, sells her ways, the younger prince is also in the midnight market. He has escaped. It is multi POV, well, not multi POV, it's POV in between Luli and Asia, who is one of the older, older prince's 40 thieves. And then we also follow Mazin. Mazin is one of the princes. And it is Mazin who Luli 
saves. I can say that it's not on the um it, it's not spoiler, it says it on the back. So Mazin is intrigued and entranced by the storyteller in the market. And from there, Ajin picks up on where he is and attacks him. Luli saves the saves Mazin, but obviously that draws the attention of the Sultan, who thinks, oh great, I have to honour this person. Then he finds out who Luli is, the Midnight, Mar the midnight Merchant, and decides, well, I can honour and I can get something out of this. So he sends her on a um, doomed suicide mission, almost, for a lamp. I.e. the genie in the lamp. The lamp that the Aladdin story stems from. And what follows is a story of uh, revenge from all parties involved. It's a travel story and it's a story of magic in the sense that the true magic, the obvious magic, which is the gin magic, but then the magic of storytelling, uh, the magic that telling your story can bring. Because Mazin, as mentioned, is the daughter of a storyteller and he has heard all the stories. He seeks out stories but doesn't realise that he can tell his own story until later on and that is when that magical element comes into it. We do also get, uh, I'm not going to be able to find one now, um, little stories within stories and you know they are stories because the paper changes. I'd imagine in an audiobook the narrator might change or the tone of things might change. So I'm very intrigued to pick up the second book in this. Then the last one is one that I've just finished um, the morning that I'm filming this and that is Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha and Young. This I was not expecting to be a five star. I thought it might be a bit young because it is primarily YA and I think I am being a bit more picky with my YA reads but nope. It was emotional in all the right places, it was hard hitting. Um, before I gush I will read you the back. Each year eight beautiful girls are chosen as paper kings to serve the king. Paper kings? Paper girls to save the king. It's the highest honour they could hope for, and the most demeaning. This year, there's a ninth. And instead of paper, she's made of fire. Lay is a member of the paper caste, the lowest and most persecuted class of people in Akara. Ten years ago, her mother was snatched by the royal guards and her fate remains unknown. Now the guards are back, and this time it's Lay thereafter, the girl with the golden eyes, whose rumoured beauty has piqued the king's interest. Over weeks of training in the opulent but oppressive palace, Leigh and eight other girls learn the skills and charm that befit a king's consort. There, Leigh does the unthinkable. She falls in love. Her forbidden romance becomes enmeshed with, a, with an explosive plot that threatens her world's entire way of life, and Leigh, still the wide-eyed country girl at heart, must decide how far she's willing to go for justice and revenge. What's giving me... What gave me the five star rating because I did use Corpel was enjoyment. I could not put this book down. It's 370 odd pages and I read it within three days. And the first thing I did this morning was want was wake up and finish this book. It just gripped me. Um there were some oh well, there are trigger warnings within this. The main ones that I would say are scenes of violence and sexual assault. There are probably others. Um, death of a parent, but I personally don't tend to have many triggers, if any. Um, I'm not saying that to brag, I'm just saying that not many things in books really get to me like that. Uh, so just be aware of that going in if you are sensitive um, to talk of violence against women, um, discrimination, prejudice, 
all those nasty things that happen in the real world that you may want to escape from when reading. But seeing that, for me personally, it was beautifully done. Um, there was that right level of detail. There is a couple of um, sexual assault scenes in there. It is YA, so it can't be too descriptive or graphic, but it toes the line, I think. Um, for me, just I know it's only a story, I can put it down, but for other people, I know it could be a sensitive subject, so just be wary um, going in. And I loved Lay's journey from the wide-eyed country girl to the survivor. All the girls of the, all the paper girls of this year end up being survivors and victims. Um, but what's interesting is how Lay and Ren, who was another girl, um, they rise above that victim status and they become survivors they fight whereas there's one girl who falls for the abuse of the king um and she's the youngest so she may be a little bit more open and brainwashed and then the other girls just seem to get on with it all the girls have their own story and their own personality and they all deal with things differently which to me makes it such a well-rounded story it is an important story because of the subject matter and because i've ranted on well not ranted i have raved about this and this video is pretty much and girls of paper and fire gosh I'm going to end it now. I have more videos to film and I think this is a long enough video to talk about the four, five books that I rated five star this year so far. So with that, let me know in the comments down below what your current five star reads are, what your current best books of the year are. I'll chat to you down below. And with that, give this video a like if you liked it and hit that subscribe button if you want to see this. Talk about these. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.